Welcome back to Movie Recaps. Today I will show you a 2016 comedy fantasy film, titled Super Family. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. It's a dark night on the Russian coast, and Oleg is helping a group of smugglers to steal one ton of caviar on a small boat. The sailor he's hired protests against the idea, reminding him his boat can only carry 600 kilos, and doesn't change his mind even when Oleg offers him more money. This isn't enough for Oleg to give up though, he pretends to call his wife but actually talks to the smuggler and tells him to say the cargo is 600 kilos so the sailor will take it. The trick works, and Oleg gets his ton of caviar loaded on the boat, but they aren't able to go too far, the boat and the cargo slowly sink, and the men have no choice but to swim to the shore. When the sailor demands to be paid for the damage to his boat, Oleg gives him his new and modern car, so he's left with the sailor's old rickety vehicle and debt of 1 million with the smugglers. The next day, Oleg goes to see his girlfriend Sveta at the bank she works at to ask for a loan, but she can't give it to him because he hasn't finished paying the one he's already taken. Wanting to help, Sveta offers an alternate solution, they could ask her family for help since they own a house. Oleg isn't a fan of this idea, since he can't stand Sveta's family and would rather not see them again, but he's out of options. They drive to her house where the whole family lives together, there's Sveta's father, Boris, who likes to sing weird songs and hasn't left the house in five years because he's a wanted man, her maternal grandfather Pavel who wishes he could die already, her sister Rita, who works as an accountant at the theater but wishes to be a performer, her brother Tolik, who wants to join the army but can't because of his asthma and likes training dogs, and her sister Sasha, a young girl that keeps daydreaming about becoming a grown woman and has a crush on her Sveta's boyfriend. Oleg tries to talk to Boris about his money problem, for which he has to wait until he's done singing. When Boris finally hears what he has to say, he freaks out, thinking selling the house is like selling his family to slavery. Oleg tries to explain to them that nobody will lose anything, he just needs a guarantor's letter, but it's pointless, Boris' answer is still no. Suddenly, their argument is interrupted when a meteorite comes through the roof and lands in the middle of the house and hitting Pavel. At first, the family runs outside, thinking they may be under attack, but as soon as they see a meteorite shower in the sky, they understand what's going on and go back inside to check on their grandfather. After taking him to bed, Oleg and the siblings start digging to take the meteorite out to sell it, but one by one, the siblings go to sleep and leave Oleg digging alone. He doesn't finish until morning, and when he comes out of the hole, he finds Pavel calling him from bed to tell him he's about to die. Oleg wants to call an ambulance, but Pavel forbids it, he's lived long enough and wants to leave this world in peace. Before passing away, he gives Oleg one last massage to pass on to his family, they can all go to hell. After checking Pavel's pulse to be sure it's real, Oleg rushes to Sveta to give her the news, but she's deeply asleep and won't pay attention. Oleg ends up falling asleep next to her, and when Tolik comes later to show him something, Sveta is gone. Oleg follows Tolik to the living room and finds the meteorite is transformed into a strange liquid. Sasha has gained super strength and Rita can fly. Sveta shows up a moment later, appearing with half her body invisible, and Pavel suddenly joins them as well, alive and well. But when Rita can't control her new ability and flies away through the hole on the roof, she quickly falls to the ground, and Pavel passes away again as Sveta comes fully visible. After they help Rita back inside and tie her up so she can't float away again, causing Pavel to awaken, they reach the conclusion that the meteorite has given them special powers. Sveta thinks they should call the authorities, and as soon as she leaves the room, Pavel dies again and Rita stops floating. It seems these special abilities only work if they're all together. They go to see a doctor to ask him about it, but the doctor says they're healthy and there is nothing wrong with their bodies. This interrupting effect they get when they separate must simply be part of how their powers work. Later during dinner, they discuss what they should do with these powers, Rita wants to perform but Pavel thinks people will experiment on them if they knew. While Tolik feeds his dogs and discovers he can understand them now, Oleg tells Boris that the family should appear on TV and get paid for it, but Boris refuses to have his family used like that. When they go to bed, Oleg asks Feta about the money they keep in the bank while she wonders if she'll have invisible children. The next morning, Pavel tries to hang himself, but it's pointless, as long as he is around his family, he'll stay alive. Boris discovers his power as teleportation when he goes to the bathroom and tries too hard to relieve himself, and decides the family needs a little vacation to deal with this. The group goes to a lake to fish and while Boris learns to control his power, Oleg tells everyone about the plan he's come up with, they should work together to rob a bank. With Sveta being invisible, she just needs to walk and then walk out with the bag of money while everyone sits in the car nearby so she doesn't lose her ability. Rita, Tolik, and Sasha are in, but Boris continues to turn down the idea, even saying he doesn't care if Oleg leaves and they can't use their powers anymore. Angry, Oleg gets in the car and Sveta follows him after telling his family to put Pavel's body in the basement until they come back. On the road, Oleg tries to convince Sveta his plan is a good idea, but they're suddenly made to pull over by another car. It's the smugglers, who want their money. Oleg tells them he could have it in a month, 
but they can't accept that, he'll pay them in a week or they will sell his organs in the Chinese black market. After the smugglers leave, Sveta finally understands that Oleg's debt isn't just about the money, it puts his life in danger too, so she accepts to help him. The following day, the couple takes Boris to see a wonderful new house that they could buy if they follow the plan. Boris doesn't think he needs a new house, but Sveta finally stands up for herself and tells him the family is sick of the old rickety house and they will move anywhere with a functioning toilet. Boris still refuses, but when Sveta starts crying and points out she's asking for his help for the first time in her life yet he won't listen to his daughter, Boris finally gives in and accepts to rob the bank. After discussing the details of how they'll pull it off, the family celebrates the new life they'll have, and Sasha keeps interrupting Oleg and Sventa when they try to have some private time together. The next morning, she even puts some makeup on to impress him. Oleg is surprised when suddenly, all the family members start putting down conditions if he wants them to collaborate, Pavel wants to be cremated after the robbery is over, Rita wants to fly in front of an audience and Sasha wants to have a date with him. Oleg thinks they're asking for too much and refuses to collaborate, but Boris scolds him and tells him that if he wants to be part of the family, then he'll help them in return or the deal is over, so Oleg has no choice but to fulfill everyone's wishes. After visiting the theater Rita works at and scheduling her show, Oleg finally discovers what his power is while in bed with Sveta. He can pour water out of his finger, which Sveta points out is useful for watering the plants. The following morning, Sasha joins the couple when they go check out the bank that will be their victim, it's not the one she works at, so they can avoid suspicion. While they discuss the details, Sasha asks what would happen if Sveta was caught and sent to jail, wondering who would take care of Oleg. Amused, Sveta plays along and tells her she can do it. When they return home, they find out Tolik has shaved his head because he's finally been accepted in the army, which means he won't be available to rob the bank. Boris is sad that he'll be losing his son, but Oleg can't stop thinking about the plan, so he pulls some strings among his contacts and gets the army to talk to Tolik and tell him it was all a mistake. Tolik is obviously furious and upset about this turn of events, but Boris doesn't hide how pleased he is that the army has, according to him, seen the light. Oleg comforts Tolik, telling him that after they rob the bank he can talk to some people he knows and get him it, gaining Tolik's trust as he hugs him. Next, they go to a funeral home to make the arrangements for Pavel's cremation. The employee gives them a piece of paper that Pavel can stick to his chest so when the police find him dead, they'll know to take him there. Afterward, Oleg takes Sasha out for lunch at a fancy restaurant while the family watches them from afar and Sveta invisibly sits next to them to keep an eye on her sister. Sasha wants Oleg to take her with him after the robbery because she can't stand her family anymore, but before Oleg can turn her down, they're interrupted by the smugglers, who are also eating there. They come closer to interrogate Oleg, and when Sasha notices they're bad guys, she stands up and doesn't hesitate to beat them up. The whole family starts running away to avoid trouble, causing Sasha to lose her super strength and finally leave the smugglers behind as well. Later, the family spends the night listening to Tolik's dog sing the national anthem. The following day, it's finally time to execute the plan. Oleg parks the car across the street under the sun, because the shadowed alley Boris points it has a no parking sign. Since she can only make her body invisible but not her clothes, Sveta takes them off before walking into the bank, invisible and naked, together with Oleg. She follows the employees around to learn all the passwords and safe codes while Oleg takes a picture of the floor map in case they need to escape. Meanwhile, Boris is tired of the sun and decides to move the car to the little alley to get fresher air. This turns out to be a problem, that area is only for the bank's armored trunk to park at, and when one of them arrives, they ask the family to move away. Boris refuses because it would cause Sveta to become visible, so seeing they have no other option, the guards use their own truck to push the car away. As Sveta appears in front of an employee and a client that can't believe what they're seeing, the family calls Oleg, who rushes outside and helps them drag Pavel's body to the front of the bank so they can all be closer to Sveta again. She instantly recovers her powers and disappears, so the two men that saw her think they were hallucinating. The family gets ready to leave but is stopped by the police, who only want to check on them. Boris however, thinks he's a wanted man and teleports away, appearing inside the cop's truck without meaning to and getting arrested for it. Hours later, Oleg gets him out after losing another car as payment, and when they arrive home, he tells the family that Boris isn't wanted after all and it had all been his imagination. Furious, he yells at everyone for misbehaving and makes them promise there won't be any more arguments or misuse of their powers. The next day though, they still have to take Rita to the theater, since it was part of the deal. When it's her turn to perform, she sees there's a big crowd, including people she knows, and gets stage fright. Rita flies out of the theater, not wanting to perform anymore, and when Oleg goes after her, he's found by the smugglers, who take him to the stage and throw him around as they beat him up, making him the new show of the day. When they're finally done and let him go, Oleg is so angry and hurt that he insults the whole family for the failures they keep encountering, calling them lazy, selfish fools, capable of using the best technology in the world to just scratch their rears. Oleg tries to leave them, not wanting anything else to do with them, 
but Boris gets an idea and decides to kidnap him. When night falls, the family goes back to the bank, ready to pull off the robbery. While Pavel distracts some drunk men that are hanging out nearby by drinking fuel and lighting his breath on fire, the rest of the family covers their faces and gets ready to strike. Sasha pushes a truck in front of the street they are at to hide what they're doing, then she pulls a chain Rita has put on the window, opening a hole in the wall. Boris teleports inside and Sasha throws Sveta into the hole before Rita picks her up and flies her there with the others. Then, Sveta uses the code she learned to disable the alarm and Sasha simply picks up the safe and throws it out on the street. As the family starts taking the money out and throwing it in the car, the police arrive, but Tolik keeps them distracted by sending the dogs after them. Once they have all the money they could take, they escape after picking up Pavel, who leaves a fire behind him as he runs away. The sun has raised by the time they make far away from the bank to stop and celebrate. Pavel uses that moment to remind them of the last part of the deal and asks them to leave him behind so he can finally die. After everyone says their goodbyes to him, the family drives away, but they get upset when they see Pavel's body fall dead and return to help him. Pavel doesn't accept this and yells at them, reminding them this is what he wants. Boris cuts in saying they should live together as a happy family, but Oleg reminds him they can't stay because the plan they pulled off wasn't as smooth as the original and that the police will find them sooner or later. Besides, he and Sveta have already planned to go to Thailand, Tolik will be leaving for Moscow, and Sasha and Rita want to go to Brazil. The girls want Boris to go with them, but he doesn't have time to reply because Pavel tells them he's called the police so they can find his soon-to-be dead body, so the family leaves for good this time. Seeing her grandfather die truly upsets Sveta, who refuses to grab the money when Oleg starts dividing it some hours later, saying they should give it back. Oleg refuses, so Sveta kicks him out of the car, saying she doesn't want to be with him anymore. Seeing as the family hasn't changed after all, Oleg leaves and takes care of his business. He pays the smugglers what he owed them, then hides the rest of the money by taping it to his body under his clothes. When he goes to the airport, ready to leave the country, he sees on the news that the family has been arrested for trying to recover Pavel's body from the funeral home. At first, he tries his best to ignore it, but once he boards the plane, he can't deal with the guilt anymore and returns to town to help them. His first stop is the funeral home, where he tries to bribe the employee to give him the body back. Seeing as there are so many people desperate to have Pavel, the man asks for one million and doesn't take any other of the lower amounts Oleg tries to negotiate with. Since as he has no other choice, Oleg pays all the money he has left and takes Pavel with him to the court where the family is being put on trial. As soon as they step inside, everyone recovers their powers and chaos ensues. Boris teleports out of the cage and while he and Pavel start beating people up, Sasha breaks the cage to let her siblings out. Together they knock out various officers while the rest of the people run away, and now they're all reunited, Boris accepts that this kind of crazy plan officially makes Oleg part of the family. Waiting outside for them there's a group of armed cops, who Rita distracts by flying above them pretending to be a religious apparition. This gives them enough time to steal a car and drive away, but the police soon snap out of it and start chasing them through the city. Boris teleports inside of one of the police cars to make them drive away, Sasha pushes others with her super strength, and when they accidentally drive through a vegetable stand and the mirror gets dirty, Oleg cleans it with the water he pours from his finger. Sasha uses her strength again to help the car make a sudden turn, causing all the police vehicles to crash against each other except for one. They manage to finally lose it when Rita stands up and pushes up the car as she flies up, making the car float away with her. Sometime later, the family meets with the smugglers and pays them to hide them in one of their containers so they can escape to Thailand undetected. Now they have 20 days ahead of where their only company will be each other. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.